Topping today's news, the Minister of Sports explains the Carifta spending. The Education Ministry addresses the school fight at Eight Mile Rock yesterday. The Ministry of Environment takes its focus to the Fox Hill community. And the National Regatta in Exuma, it's underway. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jerino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. After a leaked audit report last week showing the government overspending about approximately $7 million in hosting the 2023 Carifta Track and Field Championships and the 50th Jubilee Bahamas Games, today, during the communication to the House of Assembly, the Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, Mario Boleg, thought to set the record straight and table the Carifta Games audit statement, which he says was unfortunately never provided to the Auditor General. The audit revealed that the Carifta Championships alone cost $6.43 million, which exceeded its already increased budget of $1.4 million. The report led to widespread criticism of the government and the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, which the minister believes is premature. Since the release of this report, which I received just Sunday upon my return to the country. This has been corrected, and I can confirm to the Parliament that this auditor, that the auditor is now in possession of these reports. These documents demonstrate our commitment to financial transparency and will provide full detail insight into the games conducted and outcomes. This financial report clearly indicates the Carifta Games ended successfully in a surplus balance of 185,000 and not a deficit of 800,000. This settles the matter of any overspending. Minister Boleg explained that the legal framework used for the Carifta Games followed established guidelines used for previous international events hosted by the Bahamas, like multiple world relays. However, he admitted that it was a lack of communication between his ministry and the Auditor General that led to the discrepancies. I acknowledge there was a notable lapse in communication during the process involved. At no time did I ever caught a conversation with the Auditor General Law's office or him with me, but he would have pro followed the proper protocol and had a conversation with the financial leader of the ministry. I'll leave it like that. I have asked my permanent secretary to schedule an additional meeting with the office of the Auditor General, and these meetings are intended to provide further clarifications, address any identified gaps, and ensure that any concerns arising from the audits are discussed thoroughly. Mr. Boleg expressed his disappointment that the audit was made public before he had a chance to see it. He says he will meet with the local organizing committee for the Carifta Games to go over each line item that may be in question by the audit before meeting with the Auditor General once again. The sports minister recommitted the Davis administration to continued support for youth and sports development here in the Bahamas. The Ministry of Health is teaming up with the Hunan provincial government to provide cataract surgery for 200 patients at the Princess Margaret Hospital. The Brightness Action Initiative will assist with the current backlog of patients impacted by visual impairments awaiting surgery. Tuesday, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Michael Dowell announced the initiative and spoke to the significance of this collaboration. Bright Action will provide the vital surgical interventions to restore eyesight to patients who seek ophthalmology services from the Public Hospitals Authority. Brightness Action builds on the success of past programs, such as the partnership with the Chinese Government National Health and Family Planning Commission in 2014 and 15, and the previous collaboration to enhance ophthalmology services to bring lasting relief and improvement to countless Bahamians across the archipelago. 
Governor of Hunan Province, Mao Wei Ming, says the collaboration is another symbol of China's commitment to supporting the Bahamas health sector and Bahamians in general. Governor Wei Ming went on to provide details on plans for the upcoming surgeries via interpreter Yang Piran. All the medical personnel are ophthalmologists and technicians from Xiangya Hospital. Here, they will work with the staff of the Hospital of Princess Margaret and to carry out the cataract treatment program for one month, bringing back brightness and warmth for them. Minister Davos says following the final shipment of equipment, doctors will begin seeing patients in the first week of June. As he entered the House of Assembly this morning, leader of the official opposition, Michael Pintard, was asked by reporters to react to Prime Minister Philip Davis saying last week that women in sexually abusive marriages have divorce as a means of dealing with that situation. Uh, the Prime Minister is a serial flip-flopper. He changes his position uh, regularly. Again, you would recall the Prime Minister promised to address this issue, as he has promised with NIB and a number of other are uh, areas, and he continues uh, to change his position. So he has to make a principled uh, decision as the leader of the country. Uh, what that opinion does not address is whether or not it is correct for a woman against her will to be forced uh, to, uh, to have sex with where she may believe her life is at risk or for other reasons she determined this is not the correct time. Um, so so the, prime, the Prime Minister knows that this is a very complex issue and he should not dismiss it with such an oversimplified uh, response. Mr. Pintard was also asked if the opposition supports the government's assertion that the economy has almost fully recovered from the COVID-19 pandemic. The fact of the matter is the Bahamas economy is growing at a lower rate than is necessary to absorb those persons who are coming out of school and those persons who have been discouraged for applying for jobs. So our real discussion should be, are we growing at the rate required to address the recurring needs and the emerging needs of this economy? And the short answer by all objective uh, assessments is no, it's not growing at the same rate. So we should get out of this, of, of this business of, of just focusing on pre-pandemic uh, numbers and we should look at what do we need to do to fix the guts uh, of this economy, the structural problems of this economy to grow at a rate that's going to benefit the majority of Bahamians. And right now we are not there. Mr. Pintard was also asked about the recent human rights report issued by the United States that gave the Bahamas credit for some initiatives, but was also critical of the Bahamas in other areas. Mr. Pintard admitted that he has not read the report and will respond at a later date. It was a disturbing scene making rounds on social media on Tuesday. Students of Eight Mile Rock High School on Grand Bahama seen on a video in a physical altercation with a school resource officer, a member of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. The Ministry of Education, Technical and Vocational Training sent out a press release today saying that it is aware of the incident, adding that it has a zero tolerance approach to school violence and takes very seriously any such incidents. The ministry also said that the school administrative team is working closely with the police on Grand Bahama to address the incident. According to the release, several students are also in police custody, assisting with their investigation. And finally in this segment, U.S. Embassy Charge d'Affaires Usha Pitts officially left the Bahamas on Friday after serving as the U.S. top official here in the country since New Year's of 2021. New Year's Day 2021 is when she arrived. Mrs. Pitts informed that the Charge Kimberly Furnish will arrive in the Bahamas in about two to three months' time. An interim charge will take over the duties at the Embassy Nassau until then. As for a U.S. ambassador to the Bahamas, Mrs. Pitts explained last week that U.S. internal politics has been a roadblock to appointing an ambassador to the Bahamas. Pitts now heads to her new post in Haiti, where she will assist the ambassador there. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials. 